Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I am the Executive Editor of Dataversity. We'd like to thank you for joining this Dataversity webinar, Analyzing Billions of Data Rows with Alteryx, Amazon Redshift, and Tableau, sponsored today by Alteryx. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we will be collecting them via the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. If you'd like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag Dataversity. If you'd like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. Just click the chat icon in the upper right for that feature. As always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of this session, and any additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now let me turn it over to our moderator for today, Raman Kaler, the Alliance Marketing Manager at Terex. Raman, hello and welcome. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today as we present Analyzing Billions of Data Rows with Amazon Redshift, Alteryx, and Tableau. Today's presenters are Adrian Moong, Brandon Chavez, and myself, Raman Kaler. Adrian is an amazing analyst turned analytics consultant for RXP services. It's worth noting that Adrian is also an Alteryx analytics certified expert, otherwise known as an ACE. We'll also be joined by Brandon Chavez, who is with our webinar co-sponsor, Amazon Web Services. Brandon is a cloud artisan for the Amazon Partner Network with a focus on handcrafted, small batch, sustainable, and organic cloud architectures. And finally, I'm Raman Kaler, and I'm a part of the Alliance Marketing Team with Alteryx. And with that, let's go ahead and begin. Alteryx is a leading platform for self-service data analytics. It provides analysts with a unique ability to easily prep, blend, and analyze all of their data using a repeatable workflow, then deploy and share analytics at scale for deeper insights in hours, not weeks. We enable analysts to access, prep, and blend all of the relevant data for the analytics. It doesn't matter where that data is actually stored. It could be anywhere from the likes of Hadoop, Redshift, or Excel. With Alteryx, you can also enrich your internal data with leading third-party data for additional insights and help creating the perfect data sets for your needs. Once you have your ideal data set, use the same workflow to perform your analytics, predictive, statistical, and spatial. Our predictive capabilities are based on the R language but we've created drag and drop tools so that no coding is actually required, and our spatial analytics tools utilize data from TomTom to do sophisticated location or geospatial analysis. Once you run your analysis in Alteryx, we make it easy to enable reporting, output data for visualization, or create analytic apps that allow business decision makers to customize and run their own analytics without having you create custom reports each and every time. All of this is done, again, with one repeatable workflow. Okay, so where does Alteryx fit into the data integration market? On the right, you see the rapidly growing data prep and blending market led by Alteryx. Gartner correctly called out this market as the place where the majority of spending for business user data integration is taking place today. Data analysts appreciate the ability to uh, the ability of Alteryx to allow them to prep and blend wherever, whatever data they want to use in their analysis. They're no longer limited to the data that IT is able to pull for them. Once this is done, Alteryx uses the same workflow for analytics and delivers deeper insights in hours, not the weeks that are typically required with the other approaches that you see here. And with that, I'd like to hand it off to Brandon. Brandon? Great, thank you. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Brandon Chavez. I'm a solutions architect with Amazon Web Services, um, and I work in the Amazon Partner Network uh, to work with our technology partners um, to build solutions on top of the AWS platform. Um, so if I can change the slide here, great. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about Amazon Redshift. Um, so let's answer the question, what is Amazon Redshift? And Redshift is our fast, fully managed, and petabyte scale data warehouse service. Um, and Redshift makes it simple and cost effective to analyze all of your data. Um, and it can plug right into your existing business intelligence tools. So Redshift is optimized for data sets that range from 
a few hundred gigabytes to a petabyte or more. Um, and it's priced at less than $1,000 per terabyte per year. So um, we find that that's about a tenth of the cost of most traditional data warehousing solutions. So uh, to summarize, it's a fast and cost-effective platform, and you can launch a cluster in just a few minutes, right? And so you can also scale it up uh, to meet your needs um, with just the push of a button. And so Redshift is not only um, just cost effective, but it's also easy to use. So uh, right up front, provisioning a cluster takes about 15 minutes. Um, there's no upfront cost to get started, like, like all Amazon Web Services, but you just pay hourly as you use it. And a huge benefit of Redshift is that it manages the work needed to set up, operate, and scale a data warehouse. And so that includes things from provisioning infrastructure capacity to um, automating uh, kind of routine auto, uh, ongoing administrative tasks, so things like backups and patching. Um, on top of that, Redshift automatically monitors the nodes in your cluster um, and the drives in the nodes and, and helps you recover from failures. Um, when you look at the hourly price for Redshift, keep in mind that that's for a single Redshift node and the annual cost per terabyte is if you ran the node nonstop for a whole year. Um, Redshift also doesn't charge for the leader node, so your cost is, is determined by the number of nodes running per hour in your cluster. Our smallest SSD node lets you get started for about 25 cents an hour. So I'm talking about things like nodes and clusters. Um, it probably helps to dig in a little bit into the architecture on the back end. So, Redshift is a columnar, massively parallel processing data warehouse, and it's designed to be run as a clustered system. Um, to interface with this cluster, you use, uh, we present the Postgres port protocol over you know, standard uh, connectors like JDBC and ODBC. So that allows you to connect your SQL client or business intelligence tools directly to the cluster. The leader node, as I mentioned, is basically your SQL endpoint. Um, and that leader node is basically responsible for storing metadata, coordinating query execution, um, and serving as a, uh, an endpoint for the rest of the cluster. The actual data, though, is stored across the compute nodes in the cluster, and the queries on your data are executed in parallel across these compute nodes. So compute nodes can have data loaded to them in parallel from a variety of sources, and that includes um, AWS services you're used to already, so Amazon S3 or DynamoDB um, or Elastic MapReduce, and we provide a copy command um, that natively interfaces with these sources. You can also store backups of data uh, to S3 in parallel. Um, and you can do that very quickly because the nodes in the cluster communicate with each other uh, and S3 um, over a 10 gig Ethernet interface. There's also two different options for the hardware platforms underneath your cluster. Um, and they meet slightly different use cases. So you can have a cluster that's built on top of either dense storage, which is the DS platform nodes, uh, or dense compute nodes, which is DC. And so dense storage, um, as it implies with its name, the nodes allow you to create a very large data warehouse um, using traditional magnetic hard drives, uh, hard disk drives, um, for a very, very low price point. Um, Alternatively, the dense compute nodes allow you to create a very high performance data warehouse using a lot of fast CPU, uh, large amounts of RAM, and solid state disks. So they're priced a little bit differently, uh, but it depends on what your use case is and how you want to interface with your data. And so Redshift can provide this data warehousing functionality at a price and performance point that um, we see work for a variety of verticals and use cases. So if you're a traditional enterprise, you're running your own data warehouse, uh, moving to Redshift can help save you money and add a lot of flexibility. If you're a company with um, big data, Redshift can make it a lot easier to start a data warehouse um, and make all of that data available to analyze. And last, um, Redshift is a great base platform for software as a service offerings and it can add um, analytic functionality to any of your applications. Another reason that Redshift is so suitable for such a variety of verticals and use cases is that um, really there's several ways to manage and interact with your clusters. So if you prefer a more interactive way of managing clusters, you can use the um, Amazon Redshift console or the AWS CLI, the command line interface. Um, or if you're an application developer, you can use um, the Redshift query API 
uh, or one of the AWS SDKs in the language of your choosing um, to manage clusters programmatically. And so data warehouses in the traditional sense, uh, in contrast to Redshift, you know, they were very expensive, they were inflexible. Um, we found that they required significant expertise to implement and operate, um, and they were really restricted for the most part only to very large companies that could, that could afford to invest resources, uh, both, you know, capital and human resources into them. Um, they required um, large teams in order just to manage these data warehouse implementations. And so our customers had a lot of challenges with this, and so that's what led us to build Amazon Redshift. But we find that companies of all size really have data that, when loaded into Redshift and analyzed, um, it can provide them insights and critical business information. So it really allows you to be agile and find meaningful data, um, no matter the size of your company. And this enables you to use your data to acquire new insights for your business and your customers. So regardless of the size of the data, uh, the data set, uh, or the company, um, Redshift really offers fast query performance using the same SQL tools um, and business intelligence applications that you use today. So we encourage you to take a look at it um, and uh, see if it can help your business um, in a way that allows you to provide additional insights uh, for your customers. So that's my overview of Amazon Redshift. I'm actually going to pass it off to Adrian here uh, to continue talking. And while you do that, Brandon, I want to say thank you. And we had one quick question come in for you. Is Redshift an in-memory in data processing architecture? Oops, sorry, I was, uh, I was muted. Um, maybe I'd like to talk about that um, kind of offline. So it's essentially a, um, it's a, it's, so it's a columnar database. I would want to ask a little bit more about um, that question, I think. So maybe I can sync up uh, offline afterwards during the Q&A, if that's okay. Perfect, thank you. Morning, everyone, it's Adrian here. Um, before we begin, I just a uh, little bit of a disclaimer. All data here that's used for the presentation is just for sample data, and it's really to demonstrate capability of AWS, Eltrix, and Tableau. No actual Mason data will be shared. I would like to cover four key areas in my presentation today. A quick introduction, some of the business challenges that are faced, using best-of-breed technologies, and finally, sharing with you some of the key learnings that I've actually encountered. Amazon is Australia's award-winning low-cost mobile provider operating on the Optus network. We're dedicated to delivering simplicity, fairness, and low prices. Currently, Amazon is one of the largest mobile virtual network operators with over 700,000 customers and one of the few telcos in Australia with a net promoter score in the 50s and 60s. In addition, we've also won numerous Money Magazine Best of the Best awards. As for me, up till last month, I was the analytics manager for Mason and was responsible for analytics strategy and execution across all areas, including finance, sales, marketing, and HR. My expertise is really about decision support and management consulting and how do you actually use technology and visualization to actually bring out, um, to improve business stakeholder engagement and drive key decision making. At Amazon, we have a bold vision for analytics. It's not about how much data you have, it's about how you actually get insight out of it in that timely, continuous manner. I personally find that AWS, Altrix, and Tableau enable us to ask and answer questions in that continuous iterative flow, which is so important to the business. Every question that's being asked leads to more questions. Delivering a dashboard is not the end, rather it's the beginning. Our Altrix workflows and Tableau dashboards are continually refined to help answer more questions in the business. Most importantly, we believe the tools we have combined with our agility is what gives us that competitive edge. So 
So many of you will ask, why have an analytics program? Well, we've seen benefits in three main areas. First of which is workforce productivity. By enabling line of business people to quickly build on a baseline of analytics, they can solve their own specific business problems quickly and do not have to wait on the BI team. The second of which is really reduced time to insight. Where with Altrix, instead of just gathering requirements, we instead ask a question, what's the business problem we're trying to solve? Altrix enables us to get to that data faster. Projects that take two to three weeks are now down to a day. Finally, data-driven decision-making. People can look at this data, do some discovery, and really arrive at an answer themselves, solving their own problems faster. So I'd like to now cover a second um, important area about business challenges and how we actually overcome them. So Amazon has a wide variety of data sources and a lot of data is being generated daily. As you can see on the left, we ingest data, you know, XML data, JSON data. We've got source systems and different databases as well. We have over 10 billion rows of data with nearly 20 million rows added daily. Every time a call is made, an SMS is sent, or internet traffic is being used, a row of data is generated. Competition is really intense as well in the mobile sector, where we compete for business against the three major carriers, as well as a whole host of other mobile virtual network operators. In addition, we've got a small team of analysts that serves a really wide audience, from retail sales to finance, from customer acquisition to retention and HR. I personally find that traditional tools just can't keep up with the speed and velocity of business demand. It's tools like Richard, Eltrix, and Tableau that enable all of us to become analysts and enable analysis to be delivered to the business at the speed of thought. So I'd like to quickly um, cover the best of breed solutions that were selected as well, and hopefully share some key learnings. So this is our BI stack at Amazon. On the left is a typical source system. You know, we've got multiple source systems coming in. And on the right is our visualizer. With AWS, Rich is sitting right in the middle, and Eltrix sitting in between the visualizer and the data warehouse. So the other question that a lot of people ask is, why do you actually need IT, ETL, and data blending capabilities? Why do you actually need Altrix? Well, I personally find that it's really the speed and agility that Altrix gives us allows anyone to answer questions in minutes rather than actually spending days trying to write requirements and cutting code. It really enables anyone in the business to become an analyst, and it's not limited to the BI team. In, in doing so, we really lift the productivity of the entire company by enabling people in the business to effectively answer, ask and answer their own questions. So this is how we're actually using um, Eltrix, Tableau, and Redshift at Amazon. The first of which is Tableau can be used to directly connect and visualize big data directly from Redshift or any other data source. But with Eltrix, we find that Eltrix is really good at blending data that's not in the richer database with data that's in the database as well. And you can validate and also apply very complex business rules before visualizing in Tableau. It's also really important to note that it's not just a one-way stream. You can see that with Eltrix in the middle, it's really important that you continuously iterate between the two tools when you're discovering more data. What Eltrix really enables us to do is iterate in a matter of minutes. Here's another look at, on the setup of how we pull in different data sources, some of which are a bit more complex than normal, for, for example, XML and JSON, and combine that with data from our, our databases before visualizing in Tableau. Our architecture as well, in terms of server architecture, the workstations are all completely in the AWS cloud. So we know that AWS is really, really scalable at when we're analyzing a lot of data. So 
Finally, we use both tablet server and desktop as a collaboration mechanism to deliver a variety of dashboards, data sources, and most importantly, insight to our business leaders. Our internal Tableau Dash server has several key areas from exact, exact dashboard and reporting to finance reporting and marketing reporting. I'd like to now share with you some of the key learnings that I, I have acquired over the last couple of years and hopefully you can get some value out of them. So this slide says it all. How many business leaders look like that? Um, analytics is really for everyone. It's not just the IT or BI specialist. Remember, you don't have to be a specialist to use tools like Eltrix and Tableau. It's all about democratizing that opportunity. Most business leaders really want to combine analytics with their own industry experience to make better decisions. The best way I find when you showcase a tool like whether um, Redshift or Altrix or Tableau is to really sit down one and -on one with a business leader and show them how you can use Altrix to combine data and visualize in Tableau. And then you can make a, that business recommendation. And best of all, you can do that in a matter of minutes. Like right? often you can build a dashboard in less than five to 10 minutes. And that way you can actually test your ideas with the business stakeholder in that dynamic flowing manner. Another key point to note when enabling business leaders is really to take the time and make it relevant to the different people. Senior management is more interested in insights and outcomes. Spend time with them. Show them how the dashboards were built and what opportunities there are to improve business performance, whether it's through revenue generation of cost, cost reduction. Functional leaders, however, are more interested in a narrower field where they want to spot trends where they can improve operational performance. For example, HR leaders want to see metrics around staff, turnover, absenteeism, leave of calls. Frontline leaders want to see metrics around how many calls are handled in the call center. Sales want to see metrics around how many sales are occurring in each store. Finally, it's really important to remember that to celebrate success and keep iterating. Where we started at Mason, BI was certainly not scalable, right? It required analysts to actually have coding experience. So there were a few disparate analysts using SQL to de deliver analytical solutions. Business leaders, were, business leaders and users were not empowered to analyze their own business. Where we are today, we actually combine Eltrix Tableau with Richard to deliver insight, not just dashboards to management, but always looking for ways to actually improve their financial performance. Each time, we use the tools like Eltrix and Tableau and to build a new dashboard. We don't just send people a link. We take that time to actually sit down one-on-one -on -one with them and explain to them what trends we're seeing, both positive and negative, and how, what we actually think can be used to improve business performance. It's really this personalized approach that I believe is the key ingredient to success. The other interesting point is when you get a group of cross-functional leaders for half an hour to actually click through and see what trends they might find in the data. That's, that's really about empowering getting different people together. Because no single one person actually has the full answer. And where we will be in the future is really slice and dice with real-time P&Ls using Tableau data sources, as well as embarking on that journey for predictive analytics to look at churn I hope you find this presentation inspiring and really will help you to build that creative analytics culture within your organization that's both empowering and satisfying and bringing out the best in people. There are really three key takeaways that I hope you, you get from this presentation. It's all about democratizing that opportunity, making it relevant to different stakeholders, spend time with them, break down those silos in organizations, and finally celebrate success. Keep people involved and energized. So that's it from me. I'll now hand it back to Roman. Thank you, uh, Adrian, and thank you, Brandon. We have a number of questions that uh, I'd like to address, and the first is, Adrian, what are the additional benefits that Altrix offers other than a standard ETL framework like Informatica? 
I think the key thing about Eltrix is that it actually can do spatial and predictive analytics. ETL is just there to actually enable business leaders to actually get, get things in to begin with. But it's really built as an advanced analytics platform and tool. So in terms of the predictive and spatial analytics, I think the most powerful thing about Eltrix is you don't actually need to cut a lot of code. There are over 30 predictive models built already in R, natively in Eltrix, where any business as analysts essentially doesn't need a PhD. They can just drag and drop it in and the predictive model will be, be built. That way you can actually focus on the advice you're trying to give to the business rather than struggling with trying to actually create a model. I think that's the biggest um, win in terms of the Altrix capability. Fantastic. And I know you and I have had several conversations about this offline, but um, I know you also said that in your role as an analytics consultant, you often come across this misconception that Altrix is just another ETL uh, provider, but that's definitely not the case. Do you have any specific examples you could um, bring up in terms of this is a perfect example of how Altrix goes beyond ETL? So one of the examples of using Altrix beyond ETL is um, that Altrix actually has spatial analytics built in, right? So if anyone wants to work out, you know, how far a store is from the other by, you know, um, trade area radius, it's essentially really simple to do. You know, any business analyst can actually do it. It's about four to five clicks. And a lot of the concepts actually uh, apply to, you know, a, a variety of measures. So it makes anyone um, capable of using this particular tool. You know, um, it's really interesting to see an amazing uh, where a finance planning manager can actually get into the tool and actually analyze his P&L himself with just a little bit of guidance from me initially. I think that's really um, an empowering thing for the business. Fantastic, thank you. And again, Adrian, how long did it take you before you felt comfortable and productive with Altrix as well as your use of AWS Redshift? And to add to that, as Tableau as well, I know that at Amazon you were using that particular BI stack. So what was the learning curve like? I think the learning curve, I found it to be pretty gentle. Um, and the reason was I simply downloaded the Altrix product um, did a few online things, you know, watch a few YouTube videos, and within a couple of hours, I was becoming productive. Obviously, to master the tools take take a long time, but I think most most people actually get value in it, that, that usual 80-20 rule, where I think you spend a couple of hours in it, you do a bit of analysis, you actually implement the tool for your particular use case, and, you know, I, I really believe that it's, it's one of those things where it gives you that Google moment where, Almost anyone can do it, right? And that's the that's the point. There, the penalty for getting it wrong is just to typing in Google and doing it again. Similarly, in Altrix, the penalty for getting it wrong is just do another workflow, right? It only take you a few few minutes to drag and drop things in again. So the other interesting thing about Altrix I find is because it's actually very visual in nature, so you can actually stand up in front of very senior stakeholders and explain to them in English the business rules that you have applied, right? So traditionally, um, if you had done that in code, you know, it's very hard to explain a few thousand lines of code to a business stakeholder. But now there's full transparency and visibility into numbers and the rules applied. And I think that's one of the other powerful things about our tricks. Fantastic. Thank you. And what can Altrix offer that other BI tools such as Cognos can't? So I can take that question. In regards to um, what we can offer, like Adrian said, we have the advanced analytics that we offer, as well as the ease of use, especially with a drag and drop user interface, as well as the ability to place that power in the analyst's hand. So there is no need to know SQL or have IT run these queries for you as a business analyst, you can actually do this yourself. And moreover, you can blend numerous data sources together, so that's actually a great difference as well. 
And Adrian, I don't know if you have anything to add to that, but have you experienced how Alteryx differs from other BI tools such as Cognos in particular? Yeah, I've used both tools in the past and I've used Cognos as well. Um, and what I generally find is that Alteryx is really geared towards business people. So if you have to use a tool like Cognos, typically you would have to have an IT dev resource uh, in place to get it done or BIN resource to get it done. Um, as opposed to Alteryx, a normal business user, you spend a couple of hours with them and just show them the basics. Um, most of them are pretty productive after that. You know, it's always really important to explain things in very simple layman's terms. So I think that's where Alteryx really excels. Thank you. And you mentioned virtual desktops in AWS. From a security standpoint, does that mean that once the data is in the secure cloud platform, it does not leave that secure environment? And perhaps we can start with Brandon for that, and Adrian, you can add your thoughts as well. Brandon, you are on mute, so perhaps I'll have Adrian chime in until we can get you off mute and go from there. So, Adrian, what are your thoughts on that? Sure, I think all our data um, is held in AWS in a in a secure environment, in a secure way. Um, so we're pretty comfortable with that. You know, there's a VPC in in AWS where all our data just stays there. So essentially, you know, it's much more secure that way, and no one can actually um, is authorized to pull data down or create flat files. So everything actually stays within AWS within that secure controlled environment. Yeah, that's, that's correct. I think the best way to, to describe that is that um, once you upload data to Amazon, especially when it's S3, for example, that data is controlled by you and it stays exactly where you put it until you decide to move it. And so um, for S3, uh, again, using that as an example, um, there's a few different options on how you can encrypt data at rest. Um, you can also use HTTPS uh, for data encryption um, in transit. Um, and that is a common place for holding uh, all of your Redshift data initially um, before you load it into the cluster. And you can also control access to the cluster using things like security groups or ACLs, um, or you can lock down access to the particular subnets that the uh, Redshift cluster lives in. Um, so in general, yes, the security posture for um, Redshift and S3 and, and the whole ecosystem um, that provides this data warehousing functionality um, is very secure. and. Um, you can probably find a combination of, uh, of features and, and security options that will meet your um, company's or, or compliance regulation uh, requirements. Perfect. Thank you. And we have another question as well as greetings from Brazil. So hello to our international um, attendees today as well. Question is, is it possible to use in-database features of Alteryx to process data inside of AWS? Ben, can you speak to that? The short answer is yes. <laughs> Definitely something that we can do. Yeah, I think so. Maybe at, at a, to answer that at a higher level, um, you know, Alteryx is uh, basically an overlay on top of Redshift, if that's the right way to describe it, right? So Redshift provides some of the underlying data warehousing functionality, um, and then there's, you know, a number of ways to interface with Redshift, um, Alteryx being one of them in this case, um, to allow you to extract data in a useful and meaningful way for you, right? And so you could write raw SQL qu queries against your um, Redshift database, but sometimes that's not the most effective way of doing that, and of course it's not the prettiest way, right, because you have to view it um, through some sort of uh, SQL interface. Um, but Redshift is, is basically the underlying, the underlying functionality, kind of the back end uh, for a lot of these um, different methods of interfacing with that data, and, and Alteryx is, is one of them in this case. Yeah, um, just to quickly jump in as well, yeah, Alteryx does support in database for um, Redshift in particular, so I've actually used it that way as well. And we found that you know, it's much more efficient because you're actually pushing it down to the database. Thank you both. And Adrian, how can I drive an analytics culture at my company? What were the biggest hiccups you encountered and what, how'd you come up, overcome them? I think the first of which is, you know, spending time with people, really understand where they're coming from. 
Um, most people in the business actually have a day job, so try and understand your challenges and you know the questions that you're trying to answer, and just just spend time with them. You know, use the tools for what they are. When when you actually show people how easy it is, essentially, I don't actually try and build things myself. You know, I physically give them the mouse and tell them drag this in here. Um, really engage them that way. And you know, most people, when you give them the mouse and you actually show them, you click here, drag that in here, that really blows them away because a lot of them are, are like, oh, I don't have to call anyone, anyone can do this myself. And it's really that uh, empowering moment. Um, it's really, really interesting to see. Thank you. And I have another comment. I am an Formatica developer, so does this mean I can use Altrex as an ETL tool, even though I am a developer, not a business user? So yes, many ETL developers enjoy the ease of use Altrex provides versus the traditional stack ETL tool, so definitely can still utilize Altrex in that fashion. Do you have anything to add to that, Adrian? Yeah, I've seen a lot of Informatica people as well, um, you know, they they prototype in Altrix and it, it's the same sort of logical flow. So it's all about the way you think um, and then it's just how it's manifested out. You know, a lot of people, um, it, it, it's, it's just a way of thinking right? and then the, you just follow the tools and then the tools are sort of essentially build code for you. It's a code generator, very similar to what Informatica does. Okay, Adrian, are the end users or business users expected to join tables? How do the business users understand the join or the relationship between the data? I normally start business users off with something pretty simple, um, something where you, you would join, say, sales actual data with a budget spreadsheet, something as simple as that, just to showcase a concept. Um, and then when you start doing very advanced joins, normally it's all about showcasing about where things are and helping them through that thought process. So if it's, it's really advanced, we will often build a workflow for them. But if it's simple, it's, what I personally find is the most important thing from a business user's perspective is to actually show them the concept. And then the application of it just comes with experience. That's what it is. Fantastic. And Adrian, how difficult did you find getting access to data in your company? How do you overcome the um, issue of data access as a business user? I think the key in that is actually to sit down with um, people in IT um, and people you know, in charge of the data warehouse and sort of explain to them what you're trying to achieve actually show them what you're actually achieving. So taking away that fear of what you're doing with the data, being always transparent with people, I think that's really, really important. You know, for example, once the Altrix workflow is built, happy to bring people in from, you know, the IT side, show them, and database side, show them essentially what business rules and logic that's been used. So it, it's a great tool from that perspective. Fantastic. And I have a comment that says, so what would you say if somebody felt that such a stack, uh, such a BI stack was essentially making IT people obsolete, what would you say to them? Yeah, I, I would actually disagree because I think it allows them to focus on the more important things, you know. How often has, um, you know, IT developers or BI developers been always asked to just add that extra column or, or do this, do that, you know, things that are really basic and simple by essentially giving this control over to the business people, you're actually empowering them, right? So that IT can, you know, focus on the important things like provisioning of the richest cluster, you know, vacuuming the tables, optimizing for speed, which that, that's a, a really important role as well that they play. The other important thing is also by giving them this opportunity, they essentially uh, are brought to the table, you know, uh, and are viewed differently by business people as not the guy who's, who stopped it, but rather the guy who's trying to help people. So I think quite a, a shift from, um, you know, holding things very tight to a culture of influencing. Thank you. 
And here we have another one. I know I can share workflows via Alteryx, so why would I need a visualizer such as Tableau? Yeah, that's a good good point to make. Um, I honestly believe that you always you want to use best of breed products together. So Tableau is really um, pretty good at visualization. I think it's one of the market leaders, and that's why I prefer to do a lot of visualization in Tableau. Uh, but I do a lot of data prep in Alteryx as well because what we find is, or what I personally find is, the more you prep in Alteryx, the faster your dashboard becomes in Tableau. So that's why you combine technologies together to actually use Spreadsheet um, on the AWS side, Alteryx and Tableau together, and then you get the maximum benefit out of the stack. Thank you. And next question. I know that Alteryx works with the MongoDB. Does it work with graph, NoSQL databases as well? And the answer is, it actually does not work with graph databases. And sorry, I'm just looking through a number of windows here as the questions come in. Thank you for all of the questions there. Fantastic. Just trying to keep up with them. And I think that may have been the final question, unless I see anything else come through. With that, I'll go ahead and start to wrap up. However, if I see any additional questions come through, I'll be sure to get them answered before we jump off. So thank you for joining us today and for your great participation. We hope you found this session helpful and as a next step, Please visit us at altrix.com backslash altrix for Tableau and download your free trial of our Altrix designer. Our host today, Dataversity, will be sending out a follow-up email with this particular link as well as a link to our webinar recording. Thank you and have a wonderful rest of the day. Raman, thank you so much. And Adrian and Brandon, thank you um, to both of you. Adrian, especially for joining us from Australia at the wee hours of the morning. <laughs> Always great to have no <laughs> to provide our That's audience. Great to be a part of this. <laughs> and a thanks to Alteryx for sponsoring today's webinar. As uh, Roman mentioned, I will be sending a follow-up email within two business days with links to the slides, links to the recording, and uh, additional information requested throughout, including the links to the um, to the download there that you see. Uh, I hope everyone has a great day. Thanks for being involved in everything that we do and being so engaged with all the great questions. And we will see you in the next webinar. Cheers.